It's Atlanta's number one hip-hop station, home of the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, Hot 107.9. You locked in the middays with your boy, Reese. I got a comedy legend in here. We don't we don't throw around that term in the studio. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I didn't mean to cut your uh, your introduction off, but whenever you say legend, we're like, we got an old head up in the building. Nah, man. That's a new term for legend. For we legend. got a goat old head, double old head. We got an OG in you the building. We got triple OG, triple, triple. Yeah, but I appreciate that acknowledgement, man. Man, you've been doing it well for a while. A lot of people just been doing stuff. You know and what I'm saying? And if you don't know the voice, uh, I'm rich, man. Hold up. Let me get to it because look, okay. I got so only certain people get this. The okay. biggest intro ever. You ready, bro? Yes, sir. All right, so I'm three for three for 2020. Let's get it, though. Okay. okay. Actor on a legendary show, The Wire, stand-up comedian that shuts the stage down, creator of one of the funniest characters of all time, Ashley Larry, and in uh, memory of that, I got cocoa butter for Yo, you, Yo, let bro. me get that, son. There you go, son. Yo, this, I you go. Yo, cocoa butter. I got hey. cocoa butter. <laughs> hey, we Yo, remember this the, the song. Worst, though, man. It's that dollar store. I yeah, want it, that, it, man. It dissolves directly into Yo, that little crease right here. Yo, you got to step the your little crease. Game up, <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, namesake uh, of the Donnell Rollins podcast show, the guy who made it okay for people to curse out loud in public by saying... I'm rich, bitch! The man that made it okay for me to curse at my job and the man that makes it okay to joke about things way too soon and the only person to create a candle strong enough to fight the rancid stench of $40 twerk win, Donnell Rollins in the building. Yo, that's the introduction. I'm like yeah. this. This dude is on it, on it, on it, son. Take me on the road, bro. I Let's mean, get I it. use the other stuff. I usually hear Chappelle show the wire. <clears throat> but the thing that was most impressive is the fact that I came up with a candle <laughs> to fight the ash, son, and to fight twerk winning. If you don't know what twerk winning, twerk winning is, and you live in Atlanta, yeah, they know what it is. You know exactly. They know what exactly it what it is. This candle I came up with called Black Ash will eliminate some of the <laughs> foulest twerk wins in the history of twerking. Now I have a question about well, that. Another thing, this would eliminate for some people, and I live in California, so I can say it, it will eliminate the odors of. Uh, Swisher Sweets. Okay, okay. Uh, Backwoods. <laughs> they still use those. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, what else? Um, the game. Okay. Um, what else? Uh, Frito feet. Frito feet. Hot Cheeto. I saw a girl at three o'clock in the morning get out of an Uber. Look like she's about to go smash. Walk in the store and order a bag of hot Cheetos. And Ooh, left. that's terrible. I'm like, what are you doing eating hot Cheetos at three o'clock in the morning? You know what she's doing. She's she getting doing to it. Something. Some type of uh, forty dollar activity yeah, is happening I'm, and right that, there. And, and that that candle that I have will eliminate the odors of hot Cheetos and twerk when at three o'clock in the morning. Okay, now does the wax does it like double as some type of uh, moisturizer? It doesn't do that, but okay. what it is is like it's it's um it's a uh, it's a wand of the wax. The, the wax is black, but when you burn it, it emits an ash uh, type of tone. Oh, so it's okay. a candle that goes from ashy to classic. I love it. I love yes. it. Only you could create that, man, one time Only for me and God. <laughs> and my God is a good God. Donnell Rollins in the building, man. I appreciate you coming through and giving us a few minutes of your time, bro. Like Thanks I said, me. you a legend again. I don't mean to call you old. I just mean like I'll you've been you, doing it. I'm old it. and I'm still nice with it, though. We all going to get old. Nice. Hopefully, I, I, we all going to get old. Yeah, for real, we for real. Get old. We all. So, you know, it's how, how you age. Can you age honorary and upset or can you age happy? Inspired and motivated, and that's, that's what I'm doing with it. I love how you're doing it right now, too, yep. man. Pause. All right, so listen, <laughs> let's get right into this interview because this podcast, I want to talk about that for a second, yes, man. Sir. I see you on, like, episode 12, 13, something 14. right now? This 14. This week will be episode 14. Okay. Yep. All right, so how, how did this all get started? Because I saw you doing, the, you know, the Breakfast Club interviews well, and all that, didn't it? the idea was uh, thought of. I did Joe Rogan's podcast maybe a year ago. Right. And we were well, talking you, well, you about you kept was, cutting off. Uh, I, what's the name? Yeah, yeah. I know that was that was that's the third one. <laughs> okay. So the first one, Joe was like, um, I was talking to him about me being on the road so much and I got a young son mm -hmm. and I wanna be spend more time with him, but my money is on the road. Right. I'm not I don't make money as an actor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to reinvent myself to Hollywood. Uh maybe try to get a sitcom or something. And then he looked at me, he's like, just start a podcast. Mm. And my thoughts were like, yeah, but I said I need to get money. Ain't no money in podcasts. And then I looked at some of the successful podcasters right. in the country, in the world, and I see what they're doing in regard to money. And I was like, you know what? Podcasting is a bad idea. This might be the move. Okay. So Joe encouraged me to do it then. I said I was going to do it, but I was nervous because I'm not used to it. I, I knew if I did a podcast, I wasn't going to start off with the biggest guest. So probably just me by myself. But how not, though? You got a Rolodex. The reason why is because I don't like to call people. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like, my entire career has been not asking of a favor, right. but just prove myself. 
enough where people want to work with me. Yeah. But I'm not a dude to pick up the phone and say, like, hey, would you do this? Right. So I knew my attitude toward that would probably be somewhat of uh, discouraging in the world of podcasts. You got to be able to ask for favors. Yeah. You got to be able to call people. So I was like, I'm going to have to train myself just to talk to myself. And I couldn't do it. I was like this. I could go in front of 25,000 people. And do it. But and me talking to myself, it's and different. I know you you do this show. Right, right, right. So I know, like, you have, at times, you have to talk with nobody. Yeah, I got to talk to my, and just imagine people listening. And it's yeah, different energy you, you when to, you got that crowd in front of you, though. Yeah, I get it. You know what I'm saying? The difference yeah. is, your, that's your comfort zone is, you know, you don't have to have anybody in here. My comfort zone is having people in front of me. You know what I like, though? I like how you, and right now we're talking with Donnell Rollins, talking about his podcast and some of the things he's reinventing himself in 2020 and, and going to get that new bag. Yeah. But I love how you were taking calls. Like, on, I on love that because you were getting, yeah, on the but podcast. Just to go back would... really quick on what you were talking about, how I started it. Uh-huh. So Joe Tor- Joe Rogan was like, do it. And I was like, I'm going to do it. And I procrastinated. He was bullying me all over the comments. Like, Where's the podcast? You <laughs> right. do it? So I had another podcast appearance on his show. And I was like, okay. He asked me about it. And mm-hmm. I went in my car like two hours before and just recorded myself by myself. And I was like, this is going to be my first podcast. Mm-hmm. I asked him, would he do it? It's in my phone. Can he take it? He said, he'll produce it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, so I'm excited, and then he says, "Yo, the RZA from Wu Tang is coming in next. Right, do you want to hang out? I hadn't seen my son in six days, being on the road, and I said, I love Wu Tang, but I love my son right. more than anything. So I said, I'm going to leave. So I'm leaving. As soon as I'm leaving, RZA pulls up. He get out the car. First thing RZA says is, "What's up, Ashy Larry? You funny motherfucker." <laughs> right? I now was you like, gotta stay. Yo, I was like, "Fuck my son, Wu Tang forever, <laughs> son." And this I'm like, is that parenting that is like best. Me. He not, <laughs> might not be my son. I'm being Wu Tang. And then RZA came on, uh, and I talked to RZA about doing music for the podcast. And basically, the thought was there, but the birth of the podcast really started. Yeah, so um, that's really, that's really episode right zero. There. That's yeah. episode zero right there, because that's the one everybody has been talking about with you, with, with Rogan and the RZA. And yeah, everything. but that's the one everybody was hating on me because right. they say now this is what the street said. <laughs> the street said. The street said is that I ruined the RZA podcast with Joe Rogan. They said you ruined it. And I'm telling you, the streets is hard, man. This trolling life, it's hard, man. You be trying to say, I ain't going to read the comments, right? Then you get two good comments. Right. Then you're like, okay, I'm going to read two more. Then, bam, they start hitting you, son. Bro, you are they my... They was on me so bad. They had a hashtag, and the hashtag was called, Let RZA Speak. <laughs> Free yo, him. That was, yo, that was it. Free him. And then the, the trolls now, right? like, uh, they don't... You know, I grew up when people somebody said something to your face. Yeah. They get behind the keyboard. And type. Man, they get so mad at you. They tell you exactly what time on a time code they was. At 336, I was disgusted with you, Donnell. At 336, it was cringe. It it was unlistenable at 339. (laughs) I wish I could get 30 minutes of my life back. They go hard. Oh, they do go hard. They did. Anytime (laughs) with me, whenever you come at me, it motivates me to go harder in something else. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, we Yo, see that by your Instagram yeah, page, bro. Yeah, I go bro. hard, son. Yeah, yeah. I go like you're the troll hard. of all trolls, though. But it's not a, it's not a troll. My thing is like my trolling is never like to like be disingenuine. Right. It's never to lie. It's never to like you get a thousand comments. Or everybody like, yo, he's dope. He's fire. He's fire. And then that one person is like, well, I expected more. That's a troll. Yeah, that is you know a troll. I'm, I'm a person that's engaged in social media. So what? What do you, what no do you identify way. as? As a person who bullies people on the internet no, in ain't. the most entertaining and funny way possible. When That's I say I bully, you. I don't, I, bully I don't mean like a bully. Tell you, Breakfast Club, right? I go in. Son. You do the, the broom one. The not, broom one had me dead. I'm not gonna stop going at the <laughs> Breakfast Club as long as they invite guests up there and they pulling fake booties with nuts and stuff for people to play with. I'm not gonna start. Well, this is a booty as long free as studio. They're accepting gifts of chocolate dildos from Antonio Brown. I'm not going to stop. Right. And to be quite honest, they owe me a public apology, and I want it. I want. I want an apology. Uh, well, stop disrespecting me. They can put some respect and y'all on know his who name. Y'all. <laughs> when we was in Miami, y'all saw us in Miami. Y'all went out the back door. Mm. Why y'all go out the back door? We was there. We was there. Nobody said nothing. But now you want to get back home and you want to talk about all this and that and everything. Why you ain't say nothing to us when we was in Miami? And let me tell you something. Speak your truth, brother. Now, let me tell you something. Next time you come to L.A., you better check in. Okay, check in. then. Okay, you then. You can't just come to L.A. like that. 
I got check the in. cholos, chochos. What is what are they called? The Mexican thugs? <laughs> Hello. I feel like another. Yo, I got the cholos, yo. <laughs> yo, 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 Holmes, don't come in here with that. You know what I'm saying? We coming at him. No, 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 it's saying we no problems yo, with him. Yo, check this up. You know what happened in Miami? You try to act like you ignoring it, but you're going to see us again. R.I.P. Pop Smoke. There you go, man. My homie, Donnell Rollins in the building. We're talking about a few things right now. Now, you say yeah. you're not getting movie money, right. but I see that you in this Jay and Silent Bob reboot. Ain't no money. There wasn't no crazy money with that. This is the illusion of television <clears throat> okay. and movies. People think just because they see you on TV, you're making a lot of money. Mm-hmm. First of all, it all depends on the project. Mm-hmm. That project was basically, I built a relationship with Kevin Smith maybe two years before that. He's on everything. He's on everything. And we did a, a series called Hollyweed that didn't get picked up, but we built a relationship. Right. And we built a late relationship, which, like, I know that I was um, in his eyesight for future projects. Mm-hmm. So when say, K and Silent Bob a reboot came through, he's a fan of mine. I'm a fan of his. Right. That's what we, we That makes we, a we, lot we of sense. Yeah. I probably got paid uh, 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 enough. $1,000. Enough, though. No, maybe a couple of that. Just a day rate. Right. I got you. Because everybody in that movie, that movie was, like, for just... His, true his fans, fans, his cold his fan fans, base, which they had. He did not have the money to pay everybody that was in that movie. Mm, that's but crazy. But that movie was people that loved him. So those type of projects. That was for the love. Yeah, it it seemed like you do you do things for that, man. Obviously, you're very talented to be able to Thank keep you. going. Man, Donnell um, Rollins right now, we're just talking about this. Kind of the state of comedy because you got so many voices that you just talked about trolling. Now you yeah. talk about how people can jump on things. And you were talking about your too soon things. Like, how did right. that come about? Like, I, I know how your stand-up is. But how did it come about to transform it to social media? It just was, I've always, it was, basically, it was just finding the right words to describe a style of comedy that I've been doing for years. Mm-hmm. You know, my style of comedy is like, I push the limits, you know? Definitely. And I'm going to be on top of topical things, current events. But I'm going to find a funny, funny side. And sometimes it could be dark, or like, oh, I can't believe he said that. Mm-hmm. But I believe, I do believe that, again, I'll say it again, a joke could be too soon, but never could be too soon for a funny observation. That's been my style of comedy forever. But, you know, in social media, it kind of forces you to, like, put your ideas uh, more together. Like, yeah. where it would be like, this is a style, like, okay, I can make this a hashtag. Mm. And they got to make it make sense like that. Make yeah. It make sense. So people can't run off with the wrong way As to I, an extent. And then I met a, um, a guy on the internet, uh, Bearded Humor, Andy Singer, this, like, redneck-looking white dude, never get how funny of a person he is through the mean thing, which is a whole different mm-hmm. style of comedy. We met online, and he had the same sense of humor that I have. Yeah. Like, to push it. Right. But at the end of the day, always people laughing. Always so people laughing. So we partnered up or got together. And between me and him, I don't know if it's anybody as fast. Yeah. As we are, like I seen we, y'all. Too I, soon? Yeah, I seen y'all. Y'all did some live shows together, right? No, we yeah, we did one or two live shows. Right, together. right, right. But I've like, like we, like we. I can say that we are always, always on what the hottest thing is in the news in the streets, and we find some humor. In. I love that man, Donnell Rollins, right here, man. And we talk about comedians that have had a run like you. I heard somebody say once, "What's his funny joke?" I know your funny joke. Because every time I walk into a restaurant, I'll be like, is they Chinese, Chinese, Japanese, Chinese, oh, yeah. Korean, Chinese? My, like, bruh. That was one of my, um, that, that was one of my um, strongest characters when mm. I first started. Yeah. I used to talk about how I used to go to, like, the, the Korean fast food spot. And I would get in arguments with this older Korean guy. <laughs> and um, it's a it's an old character, but I've somehow figured out a way to introduce him to different situations mm-hmm. and stuff. But, yeah, that was one of my, especially when I when I first started one of my strongest characters and I and I and I brought him back yeah man I, I, I that joke had me dying that was something like one. people used to repeat and I was like that's that's a funny joke you could carry on man oh yeah I, forever because everybody knows that um that that older angry Asian dude <laughs> facts doing more now with the corona everybody watching out for him I know which is it's, it's terrible that it's terrible corona, it's terrible I, I, see, it's I saw you on TMZ too with the mask bro yo man you gotta get the M3 <laughs> N95 one of you there's people walking around with Halloween masks. That ain't going to stop. That ain't going to stop the no coronavirus. coronavirus. You <laughs> Freddy Krueger, dude. That, you still going to get corona. What are you it talking can, about? It can get through the Party City mask. Yep. Uh, well, you see a lot of comics kind of linking up, doing different things. I see this big festival going on with, like, Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle and stuff like that. Are you going to be a part of that? Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Um, Yeah, I just got a great phone call. Okay. You just can't so say nothing. I can't. Oh, and I messed something up? 
Do we no, too no, soon? No, no, not really because Hashtag too I'm soon? just saying they had the Netflix, the Netflix uh, comedy festival mm-hmm. and some of the biggest names in comedy. And I'll put it like this. I just got a call from my agent saying that one of the biggest names in comedy is doing a show mm-hmm. to be released on Netflix and they want you to be a part of it. Sheesh. So. Just leave Wait, it like that. I, I mean, I'll just leave it like that. I got to drop a bomb one for that. Biggest I names. got an exclusive. One of the biggest names. I got an exclusive from down there, Rollins. One of the biggest names. One of the biggest names. <laughs> one of the biggest, that's all I'm saying. I'm really, really excited because everybody's like, when are you going to get your hour special? And I'm pretty sure it's going to happen. But mm. until then, you just got to keep on chipping away. Fact. You know what I'm saying? Like, I did Netflix Degenerate. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That was a look. I did uh, Monique and Friends. Yes. Showtime. That was a look. Um, I did uh, True TV. That was a look. Mm-hmm. It's not the ultimate hour, but you got to just keep keep. Going well, you for showing it. your when funny I did Netflix consistently. The degenerate, the degenerate, they were like, um, people was like, oh, man, you might want to say some material for your special. I'm like, mm-hmm. anybody offer me a special? They mm-hmm. offer me 15 minutes. So whatever they offer me, I'll smoke it. About to give it to them. Write some more jokes. Right. Just smoke it again and smoke it again. But I'm excited about it. I just got that phone call today. I'm excited about it. So it's going to be another little piece to put in, put into the big, big picture. Everybody, life lives as a puzzle. Mm. You get the outside edges first, and then you start working it on the inside. All the middle just end. working it on the inside until the, until the uh, picture is complete. When I wanted to just inspire and motivate the world, right now the biggest person I need to do that for is my son. Because mm. he's going to actually carry on a legacy and, and be putting that same energy into other people. So I, so, I love yeah, that right whether there. Whether that's um, following... And my footsteps of being mm-hmm. a comedian or acting, whether it's him wanting to be a doctor, lawyer, whatever, mm-hmm. you know, as long as he has that that energy and that vibe, he's going he gonna to be all right in the world. That's dope right there, man. Donnell Ross, I appreciate you, bro, for coming through. And, Thanks, and it's been a knowledge because uh, these young black fathers hearing that, we need more of that type of, man, type we got, of narrative. And I know in a lot of situations, the most awful thing for me is to have, know someone that has a kid and they're not in their kids' lives. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And being in your kid's life is not necessarily just like, oh, I got him these Jordans. I gave him some money. I took him to Chuck E. Cheese. That's all cool. Time. That's all cool right now. The time is the only thing we can't avoid. Mm-hmm. Because when a kid gets to a certain age and he in our locker room with his buddies, and the dude's like, yeah, I remember that time my, my dad took me fishing. Yep. I remember that time my dad made, taught me how to fight. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to you and your dad, you got to skip the subject like, y'all hungry? Right. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> we going to order some food? What about your dad? I just want to know. Is y'all hungry? <laughs> right. And you don't, you don't want to do that. And then I know that sometimes there are women out here that put a strain on that relationship. Right. It's tough. I've been through it too, so I get it. You know it. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I've had hiccups in my relationship. Mm-hmm. And I used to always be like, man, you, as being a father, you yeah, it's important to take care of the kid, but you got to take care of the woman too because she's going to take care of the kid. And I used to say that. Before I had a kid, before I got to my first argument right. with a kid, <laughs> after that, I was like, "Man, fuck that! I'm mad, son. <laughs> I ain't paying this, you know." But it's a, you get past and you get over and, and you understand what you what you're older, there for. Yeah, and you get older mm. and you get to that point. We all gonna get there when you're in the hospital, when you're in that bed, and then you, your life start flashing by. Right. And then the thing that's gonna hurt you the most is the relationship that you not did not develop with your kid, and that's the real thing. I ain't trying to hate on nobody or nothing. Right. And as hard as it is on the money side, the attitude side, I encourage anybody or any father to try to do everything. Like some people say they're trying everything, mm-hmm. but do try everything. Really exhausted. Don't just do it a little bit. Try everything. Well, because good. your kid don't know. A kid don't, especially a little boy. I they know don't understand it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. All they know is the outcome. They all don't they understand the, outcome, the process. And all they know is the love mm-hmm. that they get. The best feeling. When Kobe Bryant passed away, the thing that hurt me the most, mm-hmm. and I was driving, I was coming home from the airport from being on the road. Yeah. And I hadn't seen my son in five days. Mm-hmm. Right. And then when I saw my son, first thing he said was, Daddy! I, and I, I, a tear, a gang, I had a thug ass tear, so I had yeah. a little ash in it. A little bit. It came down. Because <laughs> I'm like, Kobe ain't going to, this kid, they never going to say never that. Never son, they get it. Yeah, I get it. I so get you better it. Live. Hit, hit close to home. I you get what you said. today saying. for tomorrow. It is, man. Donnell Rollins, thank you for coming by once again, bro. Thanks um, for having me. No, no doubt, man. It's your boy Reese. It's Hot 107.9. We out.